Microsoft Azure Data Lake is a big data storage and analytics service. Hosted in the Microsoft Azure Public Cloud, it provides unlimited storage for structured, semi-structured, or unstructured data. It can be used to store any type of data and of any size. In this video, we will be covering what is Azure Data Lake, how to create Azure Data Lake storage, comparison between Azure Blob storage and Data Lake storage, processing of big data with Data Lake storage, use cases, and questions. In the end, we will also share details about our free Azure Data Engineer Masterclass, which will not only help you to understand basics, but it will also give an idea of the learning path to follow. It will be helpful, especially when you're preparing for Azure Data Science Certification. That's implementing Azure Data Solutions, DB200, and designing Azure Data Solution, DB201 which will earn you Azure Data Engineer Certification. Welcome to another episode of Azure Data Science video series from K21 Academy, where we take you from complete beginner, covering implementing data storage and designing for data security, to all the way designing for resilience, including batch processing, analytics, architecture, and monitoring, as well as how to prepare for the Azure Data Engineer Certification. We have taken a clip from one of our certification training program on implementing an Azure data solution, that's DP200. And in this clip, our Microsoft certified trainer will talk about Azure Data Lake. So this is a clip taken from a module on working with data storage. Now let's hear from our expert trainer. Now coming to lesson number three, Azure Data Lake storage. Now in this lesson, we'll talk about what is data lake? What's the meaning of it? How do we create data lake? and uh, how do we work with it how do we upload data to it we'll compare data lake with other options and once we have done all of it we will be talking about some use cases of data lake as well and uh, we will also explore the various type of data lake options which are there generation one generation two right so let's get started so the very first thing which comes to my mind is or which should also come to your mind is like what is data lake like what is this new thing now data lake is a generic concept data lake also exit on on premise the con the meaning of data lake is that it's a central location where huge amount of data can be stored and why do we do it because data is very important these days you don't we don't throw throw data anymore maybe if we don't know what to do with the data in that point in time maybe in future we will have some data scientists or data engineers or data analysts might be there who will extract some meaningful business insights from the data so we need some location where we can keep that huge amount of data now if you think it through uh, if we don't throw data anymore, we have to have a location which keeps on growing. Doing the same thing on premise will be very expensive. But in Azure, we have this service called as Azure Data Lake. It is having two generations as such, generation one, generation two. Generation one is getting deprecated, so we are not concerned about generation one. And generation one uh, is it didn't, doesn't even provide the same functionalities as generation two. So later on in the whiteboard, I'll explain the difference between generation one and generation two a little more. Right now, generation one is it's getting deprecated. Generation two is what we use in production. And that's what we are concerned about right now. So what is data lake? Data lake is 100% compatible with Hadoop distributed file system, HDFS. So if I have big data cluster, big data requirement, big data analytics going on in my company, then only will I go for data lake. That statement is pretty correct as such. So is data lake replacement of storage account answer is no if i'm doing big data analytics then only data lake comes into picture if there is no big data analytics going on then we don't need to pay extra for hadoop distributed file system compatibility and we simply keep our data inside inside storage account so what we learned in the previous section or previous session is still holds data lake is use case specific security as such not when we talk in terms of security, we can provide file level and folder level security. That functionality is not available in other solution. Uh, or you can say in storage account, that option is not there. So you may have a big team, but the team might be having various uh, individuals. Some of them might be having more access and some of them might be having less, less access as such. When we talk about performance, you can extract or you can load huge amount of data from data lake. It provides Spark optimizations. So it is more performant than a normal storage account. And you can create as part of redundancy, you can have three copies, four copies, six copies of your data. So even in the backend, if something goes wrong and one of the server crashes or one of the disk node crashes where data was there, it does not matter. There are more copies from where it will be restored and we will not lose our data. 
So all those options are available. Now let's create one data lake. Let's do that first. So what I'm doing, I'm going to my uh, Azure portal and I'm clicking on now check out the process guys. I'm clicking on my storage account. So I click on add over there and let's create one resource group called as maybe first data lake first data lake RG and inside this first data lake let's create our first data lake so this first data lake is let's say first data lake Shiva and it is having a random number 5779 over there just to make it randomized East US is good enough for us and the difference is we'll go to the advanced section and in the advanced section we'll click on hierarchical namespace as soon as we enable this uh, it will become you can say 100% uh, compatible with Azure Hadoop distrib so Hadoop distributed file system and this is what we call as Azure Data Lake Generation 2. So the only thing which I did apart from what we have still learned is I went to the advanced option over there and I clicked on hierarchical namespace and I enabled it. So uh, this is how do we create it from the Azure portal. Now what's the meaning of hierarchical namespace? That's the next question that should come to your mind. Now, hierarchical namespace means folder structure is there. Thus, it's very similar to, is it similar to the folder structure which you have in your laptop? Answer will be yes. It is similar to the folder structure, folder inside, folder inside, folder. Uh, and does Azure blog provides the same folder structure? No, it, that, that's a flat namespace. And is it something which is uh, used in our, uh, which is pretty used in real time? The folder structure answer will be yes creation of ability to create folders and keep your data inside various folders and the ability to uh, run queries against data which are available only in one folder is really useful. So data lake provides that hierarchical namespace and uh, blob storage is having flat namespace or it doesn't provide hierarchical namespace. When we talk about processing of big data, there are multiple stages. You can ingest data. When we talk about ingest data in DP900, we have talked about one solution called as data factory. And if you have not seen the videos of DP900 recording, please go back and see the videos. First, it's available in your K21 portal and then come back and carry on with the uh, session over here. Very first thing is we ingest data. Second thing is store data. So data lake comes into picture when storage of data come, is over there. Then once the data has been loaded or, in, or is it available inside a data lake, which is Hadoop distributed file system, we might be having some big data cluster like Spark or Hadoop, which is reading data from it, transforming of data, mod, machine learning models might be getting trained. And then the output might be getting stored in some serving layer or the machine learning models which are trained might be getting deployed as such. So as part of the process, of big data analytics data lake comes into picture in the storage section over there and various tools or technologies they read write data from data lake so three use cases here these are generic use cases not industry specific warehousing advanced analytics and real-time analytics in warehousing data lake is the heart where huge amount of data is stored and then it is processed and then it is further put into analytical data storage such as synapse as part of advanced analytics, data factory might be loading terabytes of web logs from the server and predictive model or machine learning model will be getting trained in Azure Databricks and the outputs are getting distributed globally with the help of Azure Cosmos database. Real-time analytics comes into picture when you are ingesting real telemetry data coming from IoT devices and we might be using a solution called as Apache Kafka or event hub which provides real-time ingestion engine for telemetry data and data is getting streamed or ingested and then it is stored in data lake for further processing over there so i have some review questions over here with me so the very first question is mike is creating an azure data lake generation to account he must configure this account to be able to process analytical data workload for best performance which option should he configure when creating the storage account so in the advanced section, we have to go and enable the hierarchical namespace. That's what we have to do, All right? The second thing is in which phase of big data processing is data lake located? The answer will be storage layer. It's part of storage section. So that was a clip taken from one of the lessons from a step-by-step -step training program on implementing an Azure data solution. 
That's DP200. I would like to invite you for a free 90 minute session with Microsoft certified expert trainer where we talk about the Azure Data Engineer training and share information about getting certified by using our step by step roadmap to go from complete beginner to a certified Azure Data Engineer. If you are interested, register for a free class by going on to k21academy.com/dp200 02. Additionally, we will show live demo, extract, transform, and load data using Azure Databricks. We will also share information about the certification exam. So, you can register for free by going on to this URL, k21academy.com slash dp200 02. I will see you in another episode of Azure Data Science Video Series from K21 Academy. Till then, take care.